not the time for a battery to go flat. Hi folks, welcome back. So we're on to finishing today and I'm going to be staining and grain filling the mahogany on this. I started off by drilling out for the tailpiece <clears throat> and then I drilled for an earth wire so that's all done. I'm not going to install those now. I might, uh, I might do that before lacquering, I might do it afterwards, we'll see. Um, and then what did I do? I gave the whole thing a quick sand just with uh, 320. There's a couple of fuzzy areas just around the uh, around the roundover, um, and that was in the last video where I was scraping um, and sanding the end grain. I didn't really touch these areas, so I've just tidied those up now and just uh, gone over and sorted out all the little scratches that I may have missed before. Um, and then after that I gave it a quick wipe down with some white spirit and some kitchen towel just to make sure I got rid of all the dust um, so I've got a nice clean surface to work with for staining. So for staining I've got some uh, water-based cherry which I'm going to use and the reason why I'm using water-based is the grain filler that I'm going to be making is going to be oil-based. So when I'm wiping the excess grain filler off, I don't want that to mix with the stain and potentially wipe off the stain. I want to try and keep the colour fairly consistent. So wipe that on first. Uh, start on the back, I think. So I've just got some old t-shirt material and I've put the uh, put the stain in a jar just it's easier to get the rag in and really saturate it. And the trick with this is to just keep the rag moving all the time and then you end up with a more consistent colour. Now I suppose it's not strictly necessary to put this um, stain in the control cavity but I just kind of figured if anybody takes the cover off it will look a bit more consistent, look a bit nicer. I was struggling to get into the corners with the, uh, with the rag. A little paintbrush here, that will probably do the job. Yeah, that works quite nicely actually. I expect you can't see that. Yeah, that ingrain is really soaking it up.
Now I haven't bothered to tape off the fretboard. See I'm getting dye all over it. I'm not too worried about that at this point. As I shall scrape the edges of the fretboard anyway. And also I had a bit of a happy accident when I was working on that blue PRS style build earlier in the year. And I stained the maple neck. I also stained the white mother of pearl dots, so they took on a kind of a blue tint. And uh, that looked really cool. So I thought I might repeat the same mistake on this one. And if that looks good, I think I might do the same thing on the P90 one too. Which will obviously be yellow, not red, but it's starting to look pretty good. I want to try and make sure there's nice consistent colour on the top. I've put quite a bit more on the top, I think, so I'll put another coat on the back. I can feel it's raised the grain a bit. So the grain filler should cure that, he says, he hopes. Normally if I'm staining maple I'll tend to raise the grain and I haven't done that with this but that's more down to negligence than anything else. I don't think it's going to be a problem. Tinting the uh, mother of purple, mother of purple? <laughs> mother of pearl red doesn't seem to have worked quite as effectively this time around. There's a slight pink to it but I don't think that's going to stay. I was using um, blue alcohol based dye last time so it might be that that's the reason combination of a much darker colour and alcohol based, not water based. Just the uh, end of the brush just gets right into those corners that the rag can't get to. Cool. Right. Put the hook in. And then I shall leave that to dry for a couple of hours. Right, so making grain filler. Uh, pumice powder. Uh, this is medium fine. It's not the coarse stuff, it's not the super fine stuff. Uh, dyes, stains. Um, I'm planning on going dark red. Um, so brown with some red in it. I haven't got a brown dye at the moment so I could mix it with red yellow potentially a drop of purple or just use some oil paint potentially brown oil paint. Um, oil, Thai green lacquer, something to mix it all up in, stirry stick, something to test it on, paintbrush to brush it on with. So, uh, what do I want to do first? So the idea is that the pumice powder is mixed in with the liquid and the pumice powder is worked into the grain of the wood. So that's the point of that. So I'm going to Chuck a bit of that in first. Uh, this is going to go everywhere. You could obviously just buy some pumice and then sand it yourself, but it's not very nice stuff. Now, I guess I need to make quite a lot of this. Because I need to do a whole guitar with it. Uh, a bit more. This is one of those add a bit, add a bit of something else until you get the right consistency. So it's kind of a trial and error thing. Uh, Childproof lock, that's why I can't get into it. I 
Now that's made a kind of a just a minging looking sludge that's a little bit green. Let's see if the camera can see that. There you go. Um, and there's clearly nowhere near enough. So I'm going to add some more oil. And then I think I'm going to add some more pumice. It, wanna, it doesn't want to be too thick, because obviously I want to wipe it off. But at the same time, it needs to be thick enough to actually fill the grain. So, I guess, like a kind of thick paint consistency. still wants to be thicker than that to be honest. But anyway, I'll put some dyes in first. Let's try putting in some oil and see if that works. If this doesn't work, I should be starting again. No big deal. Do you know what? That brown is not very good. Let's not do that. I'm not going down that road. Yellow first, then red. not a good idea after all. There we go, nice dark red colour. Try a bit of purple just to darken it up slightly. I'm going off piece now, this is a uh, different to how I did my tester. Uh, is it mixing? Add some more, thicken it up a bit. starting to look good. Right, put some lids on because otherwise I'll knock things over and spill things. Now the idea of the lacquer is to make the thing cure a bit more quickly. Especially if I was putting oil paints in it would take forever to dry. Put some of that in there. Still going to need more pumice here. I also think I need a bit more red in this. Yeah, dash more. This also isn't the red I was using on my tester. On the tester I used, what did I use? Angelus leather dye. Whereas this exercise is also to use up the dyes that I don't think very much of. 
rather than using on a nice piece of maple. There you go, I think that's a lot closer. A bit more red. I want a kind of a, just a really dark, almost like ox blood type red. And I think it probably needs to be a bit thicker still. And the colour's pretty good though. Kind of a brownie red. This is a trouble every time you add another colour or something to improve it, you end up changing the consistency. This is a lot better, I think. It wants to be a bit thicker, maybe. Slightly runnier than mayonnaise or slightly runnier than like smooth peanut butter. I want to be able to brush the stuff on, but I don't want it so runny that it just comes out when I wipe it off. Right. Let's give this another little test. And the idea is to go across the grain to push the stuff into the grain. Cool, I'll give that a try. Guitar. Drink some beer. It on. So brushing across the grain, the idea of that is that it works it into the wood. See the cardboard was a good idea because it's spitting it everywhere.
I'll make sure I really work that in. Also the edges, it's really easy to miss the edges and end up with a kind of rough feeling edge once you've sanded all your lacquer back. Right, I'm just going to leave that like that now for a couple of minutes and then I shall wipe it all off and I shall just sort of work on one area at a time because it's so incredibly messy. Now this is uh, Hessian, which is just like open weave fabric and the idea is that that's going to pull all the excess off whilst leaving the rest of it in the grain. You see it's pulling it all off. But the, uh, the grain should now be nice and smooth. That's the idea. And actually in hindsight what I probably should have done is got the excess out of the control cavity first. Never mind. to get out of these places. <laughs> yeah, there. Use a corner maybe. There we go. I want to be careful because if, uh, if I leave too much of this stuff in here and it bulges out then my control cover won't fit anymore. Does look pretty good. Right. Uh, some of it's in the control cavity. See, adding the lacquer makes it dry much quicker. I know my problem now is I'm messing with it too much with a brush. I just need to get it on and let it dry. That way it stays in the grain. If I mess with it too much, I'm working it out of the grain again. Not what we want. Obviously brushing on the neck is quite difficult to go across the grain. Going with what works. Headstock. Just 
start wiping all that off pretty quick because the sides were done a good few minutes ago now. There we go. It's amazing how much of a difference the grain filler makes. To its appearance, just the well the the filler itself is well it's a dark red colour, however the grain looks black now. Now I've used black grain fillers before, and they're okay, but they're, believe it or not, even more messy than this is, I find, because it really stains the wood. There's this, this method seems to just accentuate nicely. The trouble with this um, Hessian fabric or I think it might be called burlap as well. Um, it can shed. So there you go. Just want to make sure it doesn't get all over the guitar and uh, stick to it while the grain filler cures. Of course, it's not dry at the moment. It's um, it's it's not wet, wet, but it's not dry, and it will take a good at least 24 hours. Probably want to leave it a couple of days at least, really. Before spraying anything over it. So we're stained, grain filled, everything's taped off, and it's 19 degrees outside and 50% humidity. So it's time for some lacquer.